Let's turn our Bibles to book uh, 1 Samuel, chapter 30. 1 Samuel, chapter 30. 1 Samuel, chapter 30. We're going to look at verses 1 through 6. 1 Samuel, chapter 30, verses 1 through 6. The title of the message is, You Can Encourage Yourself in the Lord. Amen. You can encourage yourself in the Lord. Again, you can encourage yourself in the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1. The Bible says, And it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, and smitten Ziklag, and burned it with fire, and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Brother Richard, can you please pray for the message? Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you for this day that we've been yes. come here to... Uh, Bible-believing King James only church that we may hear sound doctrinal preaching Amen. Lord God I pray unto you to fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit Amen. so that he may speak unto us Lord Lord use him speak through him give him the ability to preach with powerful conviction so that it may change us from inside out Amen. so that we may be rebuked reprove and exhort uh, Lord God Please fill everyone here with the Holy Spirit, all the brethren here, Lord. Allow us to have a clear mind, yes. an open heart, clear heart. Uh, allow us to not think about any of the worldly matters or any issues that we have within our life, Lord. Today is the day that we come here and allow us to focus solely on you, Lord God. Thank you for dying on the cross and there shedding you your blood to atone for all of our sins, for we cannot... Do it on our own, Lord, for our righteousness are as filthy rags, Lord. Father God, I pray unto you to bless this service and, re and protect us, Lord, from any spiritual attacks, Lord, or from any physical attacks. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 You can encourage yourself in the Lord. When you read this story, David is in a dire situation. He couldn't be in a, any worse situation than he is in right now. Those that made him king wanted to kill him now. People are saying, if you follow him, you will die. Can you imagine? You and your men went out. You come back. Your city is burning. Your wives and your children are taken away captive. As a parent, can you imagine you come home and your children are gone? As a husband, you come home, your wife and your children are gone. And it's not they just went to a mall to get something. They didn't go to a supermarket run. They were taken away by your enemies. How would you feel? I mean, look at, look at the verses. Look at verse 4. The Bible says, Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Have you ever been in that dire of a situation in your life? You had no more strength to weep anymore. All the tears that you had is gone. You can't cry anymore. I mean, that's how much of a sorrowful situation they were in. When you're going through such tragedy, when you're going through such difficulties in your life, that's when your characters get tested, 
that's when you and I know who you really are. Yes. When things are going good, when things are going well, when everything's rosy, you don't know who you are really. Right. Because everybody's the same. Everybody's jolly, everybody's happy, everybody loves each other when things are going well. However, when you lose your son, when you lose your daughter, when you lose your wife, when you lose your husband, when you lose your health, when you lose money, finances, when you lose everything, that's when you know and people around you know who you really are. Can you imagine the folks who said, I'm going to follow you until the end. Life or death, I'm going to follow you. But something happened in your life. I'm not going to follow you. It happened because of me, and I'm going to kill you for it. Man, that's how David, that's where David was. I don't know about you, if you were ever in that situation, where the people that you trusted the most where you knew that no matter what happens, you thought they were gonna back you up, they're gonna be that breastplate, they're gonna be that shield for you, but turned against you because of the circumstances, because of whatever was happening. It happened a lot. In normal everyday life, in common people's life, it happens. People turn against each other, betrayal, everything. But it's happening within Bible-believing circles as well. You know what? I stand up for my pastor. I stand up for my pastor's wife. No matter what happens, I'm going to stick to our local church. But at the news of false rumor, you suddenly turn. Without even you know, doing your due diligence and research. Without even praying about it. Like, oh yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, I never liked that man. And I never liked that lady. I'm just going to go somewhere else. You know what? You know, I always knew something was off about him, wrong about him. And you were the same person before who said, no matter what happens, I'm going to stand up for that pastor, and I'm going to stand up for that pastor's wife, and I'm going to stand up for that ministry. What happened? Right. If anything goes wrong in your life, if anything gets hard in your life, you're that person who's going to, just betray everybody. Who don't, you don't care about nobody. You don't care about the ministry. You don't care about the word of God. You don't care about anything. And you just think about yourself, be selfish, and you just go your own way. And majority of people are like that, unfortunately. And David is experiencing the same thing. But through it all, David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. We go to Webster's Dictionary. Encourage means to inspire with courage, spirit, or hope. Where do you find your encouragement? Is it from human beings, majority of the time? Or do you find it from the Lord? We heard a couple of you know, unfortunate events. But we know our brethren are in up in heaven right now. You know, Brother Mark passed away, and Brother Sean passed away. One, we knew he was coming one day or the other. But other one, it was very unexpected. Yes. Young man in his 20s, he, just, he was excited to start his computer science major. And it was about to start. He had a bright future ahead of him, I'm pretty sure. You know, he had all this plan laid out for his life. Get my degree. I finally found the Bible-believing church, and I could serve the Lord together. But that wasn't God's plan. You know, something happened, but at least he's with the Lord. Amen. It's sad, especially when you think about how young that person was, especially when he just got saved. Especially when you know that he had 10 other or 9 or 10 other siblings in his family. Especially when you, that, when you know that he could have done something more. 
But however, that was not God's plan. God's plan was something else. In those times, when you hear this type of you know, tragic news, where can you find encouragement? Music? I mean, some people, I mean, just go to music. I'm, I'm sure godly music will help. I mean, God forbid you go to worldly music, yeah. right? And then be filled in your sorrow, and then you go to you know, your freezer and then get yourself, you know, that alcoholic drink that you've been hiding. And you go, oh, man, this is an opportunity for me to drink because I'm so sad. Or do drugs or whatever it may be. Or go places that you shouldn't go to. Right. To fulfill your sorrow. You have to think about it. when these tragic events happen in your life, when life seems like you so hard that you can't go on anymore, like where do you find that encouragement? When you can't find that encouragement in the Lord, then what's going to happen? You're going to try to find it at every other thing. That's where you fall into sin. Yes. As Christians, you're going to be tested. You're going to be tested regularly. And God has to test you Amen. to check where you are, yes. to make sure that you're at the right place. Right? And when those tests come, the Lord wants to see that you find yourself in the Lord, and He wants to see that you find encouragement in the Lord. But if you don't, what's going to happen? Then you're going to be in sin. You know, some of the things that I got out of the blowout was that, number one, you can't find encouragement in other brethren. You could really find encouragement in other brethren. I find this encouragement through Brother Bogey that I mean, he was willing to be out there, get out of his way, you know, miss fellowship or whatnot, but he wanted to make sure that Mark hear the gospel and get saved. And he got saved. I mean, brethren encourages me. I mean, when I was with the blowout, uh, I, people that I do remember, you know, like, you know, their sister Natalie, brother Shiloh, brother Robert, brother, sister Yvonne, you know, there was Jovan, you guys remember Jovan, you know, brother Adam, and slew of others. And then just talking to them, just knowing that they're still in the faith serving the Lord, and that encourages me. Hey. I mean, they're from everywhere else, like Albuquerque, San Diego, somewhere in the United States, you know. I mean, they encourage me. And you should get that encouragement not through your worldly friends, Amen. not through your TV, not through your Netflix, not through Hulu, social media, Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, none of that. Right. Sometimes you just got to, Understand that, man, I could get encouragement from other brethren. Amen. Thank God that you are not the only person going through what you're going through. Amen. There's nothing new under the sun. Yeah. And thank God that you're going through what you're going through because you're going to be an encouragement to someone else. Amen. Someone else in the future. Praise the Lord. That's true. You're going through some illness. Yes. May I pray for you? You know. I try to as empathize as much as I can. But I know that you're going through it for a reason. Because someone out there who's going through the same thing, who will go through the same thing. Yes. And if they hear that encouragement from you Amen. later on, from someone who actually went through it, you know, you're going to be a blessing to them. That's why whatever the state you're in, however difficult your situation is you can find encouragement in the Lord and you could be a blessing to others. I mean, don't be shy. If you see that brother or sister going through certain things that you've gone through, I mean, that's an opportunity for you to be a help, yes. you to be that blessing to them. You overcame drug addiction and this brother or sister is going through it, be an encouraged to them, Amen. right? Yes. I, mean, I haven't been addicted to drugs, you know. Thank God, but am I going to have a same effect to the same person 
who's going through it right now, I mean, they know that it's the right thing. They've heard it a million times. But if you actually hear from someone who actually went through and overcame it, it's going to be different. Yes. It's going to hit them true to their heart. Amen. You're going through financial hardship, yeah. right? It's very touchy, tough subject. But there's someone who went through the same thing, who overcame it, who's going through it because the Lord provides all the need. Amen. you got to be a blessing. Yes. I mean, isn't it a great thing that as a Bible-believing Christian, you can get encouragement from other brethren? Amen. I mean, that's the greatest blessing. Yes. But for some of you, you shy away from it. I understand there are certain people with very busy lips. If you're that busy lip, you better repent. You really have to get right with the Lord. If you're that person, if you hear something from someone, you can't wait to tell other people, man, something's really wrong with you. Right. I mean, you're filled with the devil. Yes. I mean, you love, you love to start gossip, rumor, whatever it is. Even if it's true, I mean, if it's not going to be helpful to the body of Christ, you, know, you just got to shut your mouth. Yes. You do much, much harm by not shutting your mouth. Right. You do much, much good by shutting your mouth. Amen. In any situation, right? Yes. You don't talk too much, you look kind of wise. You know, you look like, oh man, that, guy, that, that lady looks kind of learned, right? But once you start opening your mouth, oh man. What happened? You know, you just look like a fool. We say you get encouragement from other brethren, but it's double edged sword, right? You get a lot of discouragement from other brethren as well. And you don't want to be that discouraging brethren. Right. It is very easy for you and I to just start talking about other person. Very easy, right? Sure Whether it's good or bad. But a lot of times it's bad stuff. And you wish that it stops between you and the person that you just talked to. Because you guys have tight lips. You know, you guys are like, you know, secret agents. You can't share anything. But you're not. You start sharing it with every single person that you meet. Isn't it amazing that... You don't think about your own testimony. You don't think about the testimony of the local church and the ministry. You love to share things with other people outside of the church. Don't think that that's a good thing. Yes. You know what? You know, I, don't, I don't share this stuff with the people inside the church. But man, your coworkers know everything, right? Your in-laws know everything. Like Every single person that's not associated with our church knows everything. If you're not going to share with the person inside the church, right. there's no reason for you to share with a person outside the church. Yes. Simple as that. Good. I mean, your tongue, like a fire, it's going to destroy things. Yes. You want to burn this church down? You want to close this church down? Use your tongue. That's how you do it. You start bad rumors. Oh, yeah, so-and-so, you know. And a lot of times it involves pastor's wives. Like, yeah, pastor's wife, they're so strict. You know, they shouldn't be teaching kids like that. You know, blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't like how she dresses. I don't like how she does makeup. I don't like how she does anything, right? You know, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, and then the other goes, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly you have a faction of church who has so many complaints towards pastor's wife. And what do you know? After time passes by, they're gone. They either get kicked out of the church or God deals with them, God judges them, or they're just disappearing. And a lot of times, it's just start from that one single person. You don't want to be that person who starts or participate. Either way. If you hear... Any gossip or rumor, you know, if you have the ability, you know, you should just quench it. Yeah. As, as gentlemen and ladies like you can, right? You know, would you please shut your mouth? You know, that is not helping the body of Christ. 
That is not good for the ministry. Right. Yes. Um, I'll say, you know, if you have anything bad to say about my pastors or pastor's wife, you know, just go somewhere else. Go talk to the wall, right? Yes. Go talk to your toilet, right? Okay. After you've done your number two, okay? You know, that's how you are. You're like a dung, right? Many times, many, many times, when you go to a blowout like we went to, preachers, evangelists, they have, you know, things that they like to talk about. And one of the things that they like to talk about is supporting your pastor and pastor's wife. Yes. Because it's been neglected subject. Because, you know, I'm not going to go out of way and tell you guys, hey, support me and support my wife, you know. <laughs> you know? I don't want to look like a politician, right? So, but however, other pastors and evangelists do that on your behalf. Right. Yeah. Why? Because it's very important. It's been so neglected. Right. Because one of the brother, I think Brother Ianello, Brother Paul Ianello was preaching. There's a lot, a lot of people who wants to be on the pulpit, who wants to have that recognition. But there are very few laborers out there. Yeah. Very few laborers, very few. Everybody wants to be recognized and everybody wants to be known. But there are very few who works behind the scenes, right? I mean, whether we have Jubilee, you know, whether Pastor Jin's church have blowout, it doesn't happen just like that. There are a lot of people behind the scenes working yeah. who's never recognized, right? right? But they're encouragement to me. Because they do it willingly from the heart. They should be encouragement to you. Yes. We have brethren out there who doesn't care about recognition, who doesn't care about applause, who doesn't care about their name to be in other people's mouth as, you know, on the pedestal somewhere. No, they just do it. Because they love the ministry, because they love the Lord, because they love the pastors, and because they love the pastor's wife. They just do it. And they're great encouragement. That's someone, that those are people that you need to get encouragement from. Not from those who talk bad about others. Not from those who look down on other people. Not from those who only care about their education. Not from those you know, who only care about their finances. Not from those who always try to show off of something or some matter. Right. Not from those whose entire subject of the conversation is about someone else. Constantly. If you find encouragement from those people, then one day you'll be discouraged for sure. Yes. And one day you become that discouragement to other people. Can you imagine David at this time was hearing from his man, just putting him down, putting him down, putting him down, putting him down, putting him down. Putting him down. You're a killer. You kill my wife. You kill my son. You kill my daughter. You're a killer, killer, killer. You know, the people that, who says, I'm going to give my life to you. But he found encouragement in the Lord. But imagine if any one of those men came to David. Man, David, man, no matter what happens, I lost my wife today. I lost my children today. But I know you're a man of God. I'm still going to follow you. If he even had one person like that, can you imagine how much of an encouragement for him? Yes. Man, in the ministry, pastors and pastor, man, people don't look for money, right? We don't look for money. We don't look for cysts to be filled. No, God does that, right? Yes. If there's only one person here that God puts here in this congregation for me to preach, I'm going to go on. I'm still going to be same happy, jolly, or, you know, grateful person, whether there's one person here, whether there's 100 person here, or 1,000 or million, because it's up to God. I don't care if you tie dollar or if you tie million. That's not going to sway me in how I treat you. Yes. No. What 
who will be a biggest encouragement to preachers are people who are faithful no matter what Amen. to the ministry Amen. and the preacher. Yes. That's why it was a great encouragement for me to see when we were up there in Berkeley how faithful those brethren were to Pastor Gene. He's a busy man. He's always somewhere else. Everybody wants to talk to him. Everybody wants him to preach somewhere, teach. How would his church run without faithful men behind him? And that's encouragement. How can our church run without faithful men behind me? But I'm glad, I thank God, that God has given this local church faithful men and women who will serve the Lord Lord. without thinking about the stature, without thinking about anything else except having the heart to serve the Lord. That's all you want. And through that, you could get encouragement. That's where when you know that I can get encouragement from that brother, that sister, you look beyond their faults because everybody makes mistakes. If I were to make mistake A, they're going to make mistake B. And everybody makes mistake C, D, Z's, and F's. Then you have compassion towards each other. You help each other to overcome those mistakes. And you be an encouragement. Can you? I mean, the, one of the best testimonies are where brother or sister were struggling with certain sin but they got encouragement from another brother and sister, and they overcame it. Amen. And that's an encouragement. Praise the Lord. Because what you're going through right now, someone else is going through yes. exactly the same thing or have gone through it. Yes. And you could know that you could overcome it. Obviously, of course, in the Lord. Yes. Right? But God has put people around you, Thank you Lord. so that you could get encouragement from them. Yes. Do not neglect it. And as much as many people are introvert, you don't have to be in body of Christ. Because they're part of your body. I mean, as much as, you know, I don't want to see my toe, am I not going to see my toe forever? No, I have to see my toe and I have to wash it, right? Same thing as other parts of your body. You're going to eventually see the brethren. You're going to eventually talk to the brethren, Right. right? Then be an encouragement to each yes. other. The last thing is, right, you mention someone's name, and your face drops, right? Your expression drops, right? Oh, that brother again. Oh, that sister again, right? And it doesn't happen overnight. It's progressive. Right. Progressive. So you have to understand whether you're a good whether you're encouragement or discouragement to brethren. Just think about it. If someone hears your name and first expression that they do is like, you know, sigh of, a big sigh, or like, you know, they have to look away, or, you know, they start frowning, or suddenly you guys are having joyful conversation, but smiles just disappear, and then there's something wrong then whether it's you, whether it's me, we have to get right with the Lord. Amen. Don't be naive. Right? Brother knows, you know, first preaching of the blowout, uh, he said, consider thyself. Right. A lot of people consider other people. Right. You have an issue. You have an issue. Right? right? You know. But they never look at themselves, especially preachers, right? because you're leading the flock and stuff. So it includes every single person. Amen. Then you have to look at yourself. I mean, am I an encouragement to other brethren? Or am I a discouragement? <laughs> Say, I'll pick on you, Brother Richard. Right. You, you hear Brother Richard, right? What comes to your head? Or is it, don't answer, okay? I know someone's <laughs> going to shout out, right? Is he an encouragement to you or discouragement to you, right? Or you don't even care, you know? Since, she, since she's sitting next to you. Sister Tracy, right? 
I may show encouragement to you or discouragement to you. Right? Be honest about it. Yes. When someone hears your name, what do you think they think? I mean, if there's a one-off over there, forget about them, right? You always are going to have a hater somewhere. Yes. Man, Jesus Christ had many, many haters, oh, yeah. but he had a lot of followers as well. Yeah. Dr. Ruckman had many, many followers, but yeah. he has countless haters out there. Same thing with Dr. Jin Kim. Yeah. A lot of followers, but a lot of haters out there. So just it's a given. Right. Someone's going to hate you. So don't be sad, okay, everybody? All right. Because someone's going to hate you for sure. Especially if you preach the truth and if you try to live right for the Word of God, if you stand up for King James Bible, someone's going to hate you, and it's, it's a good thing. Yea, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Amen. So you want to suffer some type of persecution for the Lord because you're living godly. Yes. So that's a given. But when it comes to, you know, say our local church or your local church, wherever you are, are you an encouragement? Do you consider yourself? You always have to check on yourself. I have to check myself. I mean, when hearing this preaching or when I'm preaching, you know, it's not for anybody else. It's for me. Yeah. You know, yeah. Pastor Jin Kim was preaching. You know, it's not about your desire. It's about your needs. Yeah. We all need encouragement. Yes. We all need to be an encouragement to others. Amen. Like I said, it's not a desire. I need to be an encouragement to her, yes. to him, and everybody else. Everybody could say, my desire is to be an encouragement to others. But your desire changes. Right. Desire is something like vapor. It just changes. Yes. No but need is something that's permanent Amen. and should be permanent. Yes. I mean, do you want to be an encouragement to other brothers and sisters in Christ? Yes. Or do you not? Then you consider yourself and check yourself. If there's some sins in your life you have to get right with the Lord with, then get right with the Lord. Yes. Just repent and get right. I wonder if we were David's man when there was destruction of Ziklag, how many of us would have stood for David? How many? No matter what. Even if you lose your wife, yeah. you lose your children, would you still stand up for a man of God? I mean, as you read the story, everything's recovered. You know, Lord restores everything. Yes. Right? Amen. How many of you, the men do you think were kind of ashamed in front of David? Especially people who's close to the ministry. Yeah. They're the one who betrays the most, right? Your right hand man, so called, right? And they're the one who's most vocal, like Aaron and Miriam. They're like, you know what? He's, he's no good anymore. Put that preacher down, right? Man, the wife, no more, man. Get rid of her, right? You know, we need to have a vote. You know, we need to have a new leader in the church, right? And they never want to be that person a lot of times, right? They're too scared, they're chicken, right? They're cowards. Like, you know, I, I can't do it. You know, I, I'm not going to do it. But, you know, I just don't think that he could do it or she should do it, right? Uh, it's just not me either, not me or my wife or my family, right? But let's choose someone else. So they never want the responsibility or accountability. Don't ever be that person yes. where you never take accountability and responsibility for yourself and always trying to blame it on others. Right. Man, that's, a, that's very, very sleek, devil way yes. to influence people. Right. Just be yourself, or just yeah. be a man, right? Or be a woman. Yes. Just stand up for it. You don't like me? Say, you don't like me. Don't be like, you know what? I think that brother or sister don't like you, Pastor. I heard from somebody. <laughs> Who? Well, you know, it's those people over there, hey. right? Hey. I think you should watch out. And, it's, and then translation, I hate you. You know, but I'm not going to say it outwardly. So I'm just, I'm just going to use other people to tell you. Right. right? You know, we're not dumb. And we might look dumb sometimes, but we're not that dumb. You know, God gives us wisdom Amen. to see through some people. Praise the Lord. Then, you know, as we go back to David, he found encouragement in the Lord his God. Don't you think it would have been a 
more and more of a blessing if he found encouragement in other brethren yes. he had. In this ministry, it's tough ministry. Um, I, had a, well, I had five other points, but time goes by very fast. There are going to be ups and downs in this Bible-believing ministry. Yes. Some people will hurt you. That's given. Yes. It's a human problem. Yes. Until you go to heaven, until the day of the rapture, Amen. someone's going to disappoint right. you, and someone's going to hurt you directly or indirectly through their family or whatnot. Yes. You have to have compassion. Amen. You have to know that you could be that person, as in, I'm that person hurting other people, other yes. brethren. I have to always watch myself get right with the Lord, judge myself. I mean, that's very, very significant. You need to judge yourself on a daily basis. Amen. You have to. Yes. As Brother Noel said and Dr. Ruckman said and every Bible-believing preacher said, you can't commit any sin yes. that a human being can commit. Right. True. You can't. Just because you're saved doesn't mean that you can't go out there and kill. Right. You can't go out there and rob somebody. Oh. You can't go out there and, you know, do all this horrible stuff. You can't do it. You let your flesh take over, you can't do it. So don't ever be naive and foolish and thinking that, oh, you know, I'm not going to, I can never go out there and kill anybody. I can never go out there and rob anybody. I can never go out there and do that sin because I'm saved. You know, you're a fool. Right. You can't do it today. Yes. You can't do it right outside the door. True. So what does that mean? You and I are very weak. Yes. We have to constantly judge ourselves and get right with the Lord. Amen. When you do that, and when you're actually at that state, then you could be an encouragement. Yes. Clean up yourself first before you think that you're an encouragement to others. Right? Don't expect others to be an encouragement to you before you clean up yourself. Yes. Right? When you're always stinky and dirty, even though people give you perfume and you know scent, <laughs> It's only going to mix, and then those scent disappears, and you're still going to stink. Right. Yeah. So you want to be an encouragement? You clean up yourself first. And at the end of the day, in conclusion, we have free will to find encouragement in the Lord. Yes. Unlike Calvin is out there, where everything's given to you, right? Yes. And you don't even have a free choice. You know, you don't have a choice to find encouragement in the Lord. Yeah. We're none of that, right? Amen. We actually had free will to accept Christ and we got saved. Woo! And we actually have the free will yes. to find encouragement in our Lord and Savior, Amen. Jesus Christ. Then yes. find that encouragement in the Lord. Amen. Whatever situation you're going through, and it's common, nothing under the sun, health issues, financial issues, relationship issues, right? and few others, you can find encouragement in the Lord. Go to the Lord. Your loved ones are hating on you, go to the Lord. Co-workers are hating on you, go to the Lord. Yes. World is hating on you, go to the Lord. Amen. And just like David, you can find encouragement in the Lord. And that's a great testimony to me. Sure is. Would that be your testimony where no matter what the situation, no matter how hard it is, I can always encourage myself in the Lord, my God. Let's pray.